Good morning. Hi and welcome. My name is Marty. This is my colleague Sam. Hello everybody. And we're going to do some fun stuff today and uh, we're going to try and figure out why because sometimes what happens is scientists find out things by saying hmm I wonder why that happened and then they do experiments to figure it out and they develop a theory and then they do more experiments and then if it the experiments turn out yes I guess that's the reason why then they they have this idea and people follow it and study it and that sort of thing so that's what we're going to do today so the first part of this is observing so here Sam is I'll see if I can get this one out see if you can get that one out Sam let's see okay I have these little plastic pieces in the shape of a fish. And if I blow on it, you can see how light it is. Can I rip the bag, Marty? You can rip the bag. I have, actually I have a knife. You wanna? Let's do it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to hold this one in your hand, Sam. Put yeah. your hand out flat. And I'm gonna put this in it. What happened? Uh, I was trying to tilt it a little so the keep it. Could see. Let's okay. See. Well, and what what's what's it doing, Sam? Do you have some magical power you have not told me about? Um, not that I know of, but maybe today's the day. <laughs> so I'm going to take this one out. Same kind of deal, and I'm going to try it. Just oops. And it. Why does it do that? Huh. Now, you can't raise your hand here like you do in class, but you can send in a Q&A. So if you want to hit your Q&A box, you could send in your guess as to why my little red piece of plastic, and now it's straight again. Well, it flops down, but it's straight, but when I put it in my hand, now what if I tried it in a plate? I wonder if it's just, maybe it just doesn't like to lie flat. That's, that's a theory. My theory is it just doesn't like to lie flat. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So I'm going to put it in here and it's lying flat. No. Okay, it can't be that. That's, that's, we take this theory and we throw it out. So we're still doing on that. But we can, but that. Sam, it's still. So what's your theory, Sam? Tell me. I think it must have something to do with heat. So must have something that. to do with heat. Well, well it, it curls there. Now, what if, what if you put it on here, though? All right. So if it's heat, it should still go. Well, the, the, your hand is hot. Your shirt isn't so hot. My shirt is <coughs> still hot. So maybe yeah. if we do this. Let me see the plate. Uh, the plate. We have red, white, and blue. We're very patriotic. Patriotic. So what if I blow, like, blow some hot air on it? It did absolutely nothing. So my theory... Let's try it the other way. Still nothing. Well, there, it's going a little. Maybe heat? Maybe heat. Well, it just so happens, Sam. So if you guys want to send in your I got some guess and we go see what some people say. Sure, let's see what some people say. Lorna said to get away from our hand. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Lorna. Could be. I don't know. Um, Elijah says he thinks static electricity. Static. Good guess. Yeah, you guys are good guessers. Milo was with me. Milo said the fish is absorbing the heat. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Okay. We're gonna try this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this guy, I think. I'm going to put this guy over nice on enough. this plate. And I'm just going to, I'm going to hold one end so it doesn't fly away. Actually, you hold one end, Sam. And I'm going to put, so this is a heat gun. Can you feel the hot air? Yeah, hot. And, warm. and, and, heat is not looking like the answer. It's not heat. Yeah, that did nothing. 
when I first looked at this and, and tried to figure out why, I thought it was the heat also. I thought it was the heat from my hand, but it's not the heat from my hand. So what else could it be? What does your hand have that the plate doesn't? So somebody That's said too way. many electrons. Too That's many electrons. One. You guys are going way too complicated. It's much easier than that. Somebody said static electricity. Ethan suggested maybe the fish doesn't like people. It could be. Elijah suggested electricity. Lila said one of the smartest answers, I think, which is simply, I don't know. I don't know. It's actually a really smart answer. That is. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this on my hand so you can look at how quickly that curls up. What the heck is it doing? It, Why is it doing this? Uh, that's what I want to know. So hand oils, moisture. Ooh, moisture. I never thought. Well, of let's that. try that. That's an interesting uh, let's one. see. Here's a. Uh, I have a little water here. Okay, this one's pretty flat. That one's pretty flat. Okay, we'll put it on this oh, plate, which you not. can't see. Uh, I don't know why that one's starting to curl up. Oh, so if it's moisture, because I was breathing. I'm take on a it. drop of this. Can you see this? Oh my gosh. Uh oh. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my gosh, do another drop. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it gets wet right there. I'll put it on there. It gets wet right on the crease, right there. Yeah, I think if you hold it. Well, wet. we have to hold, no, because they can't see. We got to hold it here. Let me try this guy. Yeah, so it's the heat. The heat. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it's the moisture. The moisture from your hand, your hand is not only warm, it is moist. And that little bit of moisture from your hand makes it curl. Wow, fascinating. Isn't that fun? So this is how scientists learn things. They notice something and they say, hmm, why does that happen? And then they do tests just like we did and investigate until they find the answer. And sometimes they don't find the answer. Do you know? There are lots and lots of things that scientists don't know. I mean, it would astound you. Scientists don't know exactly what light is. Is that insane? Light, you know, this stuff, the stuff that uh, the sun comes from, the, they don't know. Sometimes they do a test and it says, aha, that proves that light is a wave. And other times scientists do a test and they go, aha, that proves that light is a particle. Well, it can't be both. It's not a, a wave, of, they, it's not a particle that goes through a wave. Scientists don't exactly know. And there are lots of things that scientists don't know. You might've heard Diego talking about dark matter and dark energy. Well, those are things in space and scientists have observed that they have this effect and they say, I don't know what it is. So instead of saying, I don't know what it is, they come up with this much more fancy sounding way of calling it dark energy or dark matter. They just could easily have said, beats me, heck if I know, because they don't. So they come up with these names. Anyway, there's lots of things that scientists don't know. So if you're interested in finding out more about the physical universe and how the world works, that's really all science is. Now we're gonna do another experiment here, Sam, because I know you love experiments. I do, oh. or Marty, I go to his lab all the time and ask him to <laughs> show me what's new. I'm gonna do this one. This one is, uh, remember we were talking just a minute ago about how light can sometimes be a wave and sometimes be a particle. Well, these waves can come this way or this way or all at all sorts, every angle towards from the light source to where it's going. And so here I have these little, can you see these little clear plastic pieces? See yeah, how it's looking on the screen. Yeah, yeah you, you can, can see, see it. it well. And yet if I turn one of them, whoa. So 
These are not ordinary pieces of plastic. What they are is plastic that have little lines in them that only say, let's say, vertical light come through. So if you hold two of them, okay, if they're lined up like this, then you can see the light coming through. But when you turn one, this only lets vertical rays come through and this only lets horizontal rays, rays come through and you get nothing. Are you having a good time playing, Sam? Marty, this is cool. These are like magic, <laughs> magic plastic. It's science. Okay. Cool. Is that what's called when you get sunglasses that say the lenses are polarized? Is polarized, that that's right. These are polarized filters. And if you had if you had polarized sunglasses and you took one of the if you had two polarized sunglasses and you turned one like that, that's what you would see. Wow. That's great. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And if you well, there are other things to do with this, but we're not going to do them right now. Cool. Next, we're going to do your favorite thing, Sam, fire. Fire. So um Marty, you know me too. <laughs> I do. So uh, if you want to, you guys could get a pen and paper at home and write down some of these things, because maybe you'd want to try some of them when you get uh, after the video, when you have a chance. So this is a tea bag. You know, I found something interesting, Sam. When I was growing up, and even very recently, a tea bag like this, what would hold the string to the tea bag, Sam? Tell us. What would hold the string to the tea bag? Right. Uh, the, it would be tied to it, right? Well, I would or think there would used to be a little staple. Okay. There, you, now there's no staple. It's just tied. So there's no metal staple. Anyway, so what I did is I took out, I took the string out and then I opened it up and I took the tea out and I sort of made the bag into this little hollow tube. Oh, so that's the tea bag with the tea out. Right. So, so it looks like it ends up like that. It looks like this. And then I just sort of put my finger in there to sort of okay. get it wide. So like we started that. from there. And now we have that. this. Okay, cool. So now so now let's go. Isn't that something. a great experiment? <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to light this on fire. And let's see if it does what I hope it does. You can see it. There it goes. And, and. No way! <laughs> Whoa, okay. it went all the way to the ceiling. And here it comes. Let's see if I can catch it in the plate. So. It literally went up to the ceiling and. And this is what to let. Marty just caught it as it came. So down. my question is, why did it do that? Why do you wow. suppose that's what's left of the tea bag? Whoa! And why do you suppose it did that? Hmm. Because it didn't theories. do that at first. Luckily, Sam, I have more than one. So if you want, you could do this. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we? well, let's start with some theories before we do it. Let's Maybe. start with some theories. So mm -hmm. I have a theory, but I actually think I know this one. So I'm going to keep my mouth quiet. But let's see what some people say. So Noah says heat rises. Heat rises. Noah, I'm with you. I think <clears> good. But why it. did this paper rise? Well, here's what I think. Tell me, tell me how I do, Marty. Okay, so I think as it goes down, the yes. weight of this decreases uh -huh. because the material burns and it stores up a bunch of warm air. And by the time it's at the bottom, you have a pocket of warm air, which is lighter than the cool air around it. Why, why is that? Well, all right. I know this because I did some science courses that talk about this. You've as, done the air course. I did. Okay. So as, and this was my science teacher, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> so as the heat, um, as the the little teeny particles, I'll draw it. Draw it. So you have this much air and it has this many particles. When it gets warmer, we have the same amount of particles, but they just take up more space. So that's called, so that means it's less dense. That's Density right. is how many particles you have divided by how much space you have. So if I took a balloon that was that size, Right. So, have a balloon so if I took this balloon, it has a certain amount of 
air in it. Yes, it does. If I put it in the freezer and came back two hours later, this balloon would be smaller. Mm. It would still weigh the same amount, mm. but it would be smaller. So in here, we have a balloon, basically. This is, this is not a balloon, so but, this is a tea bag. But it becomes, come on, conceptually. Right, so, <laughs> so in here, we end up with a bunch of air. We have a pocket of air that's warmer than all the air around it. And warmer air takes up more space, so it's less dense. So it wants to rise when it's around cooler air. Okay, let's see what our viewers think. All right, let's see. So Noah says heat rises. Lorna says heat rises. Heat rises. Alette says there's a material that makes it float. Now that's an interesting one. Well, remember this is very, very light. Yeah. So even though the heat difference, even though the, the density, that's what Sam was drawing here, the amount of stuff divided by the amount of space now you have it on your fingers. I ruined it, Marty. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Now go over this one. So even though the <laughs> density, you really, the density is less because it's spread out. That means once it burns down, this very, very light stuff can get carried up in a current of warm air because warm air is lighter than cold air. And that's how hot air balloons work. You have this big balloon and it's just lying on the ground and the person turns on these big propane. Propane is a burnable gas, like for your camp stove could use propane. And it turns on the heat and then there's a hole in top of the, on top of the hot air balloon where the extra air can escape. And this air inside the hot air balloon gets very warm and very light, lighter than the outside air, and so it floats up. You know, Marty has this cool thing that I'm sure he's gonna do a great experiment oh, with. You thirsty, Sam? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great example of how if you have a less dense substance and Oil. a more dense substance, water, the less dense, dense substance wants to go up, go to the top, and the more dense substance wants to go down. Right. And air can be warm air, is less dense than cold air, so we'll kind of do that. Right. Now you could do an experiment at home with a balloon like this, mm -hmm. and you could take the, the balloon and take a piece of string and mark where the end of the string is with a magic marker or something like that, and then put it in the freezer for a minute. Uh, if your freezer won't fit in your freezer, you could put it in your refrigerator for about five or 10 minutes and then take it out and measure it again and the string, instead of ending here, might end up here. And then you could take this same uh, balloon and put it in a bowl of warm or hot water. Be careful you don't burn yourself. And then the balloon gets bigger and the string would be, if it started here, it'll now be down here. Because air, when it gets hot, takes up more space. Yeah, okay. try it tonight. If you can't do anything else, get a balloon, blow it up, put it in the freezer, and see what it looks like in the morning. I think it'll be, you'll be shocked. Oh, you want to do this now? Oh, yes, Marty. I do want to do this. Okay. Now, if you're going to do this at home, make sure there's an adult around because we don't want any houses to burn down. Okay. And sometimes it does. on there. And there it goes, all the way up to the ceiling here, Sam. You could, don't do it, catch it instead. <laughs> or you're gonna try and catch it in your hand? Yeah. Sam's gonna try and catch it in his moist, hot hand. And there it is, whoa, there it is. Okay. All right. All right. That was really cool, Marty. Well, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I did. Now, what should we do next? <laughs> ah, let's do this. So, how many colors do you see on here? Do you see a bunch of colors? Because I do, and I'm red, green, colorblind, but I can still see a bunch of colors on here. Mm. So, what happens if I take, it has a little wheel in the back that's attached to this other wheel. So if I turn one, it'll turn the other. 
So I'm going to turn should this we, wheel. Before we do it, should we get a prediction? Let's get a prediction. Because I think one of the coolest parts of science is starting with, I don't, realizing, I don't know what's going to happen, predicting, and then observing. Great. To see Let's if the do it. going to work. Let's do it. Anybody want to give us a prediction of what's going to happen when we start spinning this thing? Elijah says, I think they will make one color. One color. Well, I know that if I mix colors of paint, uh, I mix, uh, no, not right now, thanks. If I mix colors of paint, they'll turn brown. Did you know that? They turn brown, Sam? Oh, Hartley just said it will become brown. It'll become brown. Well, that'll, that'll be what happens if you mix different colors of paint. But light is different from paint. Now, who knows what the primary colors of paint are? In other words, what three colors you can use that will combine to make other colors? If you think you know that, Q&A. All right. Sorry, I'm cheating. I'm getting more preview. Wow, okay. Cool. Isn't that cool? I hope this okay. comes across on the screen. Let's okay. See. Oh, it will. So what, what feedback do we have? What are our students saying? So we have red, yellow, blue, red, green, blue, yellow, blue, red. Those are some of the primary yes. colors. So yellow, blue, and red are the primary colors of paint. And so what's that mean? Primary that means colors? primary colors. That means if you mix two of them together, you'll get another color. If you mix these two together, you'll get a color. And if you mix these two, so if you mix yellow and red, you'll get purple. He was my teacher. <laughs> You'll get orange if you mix red and blue. Yellow. No, purple. Purple. There's your purple. And if you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. Green. There you go. But light is different. Light has different primary colors. And the primary colors of light are red. Actually, they're uh, greenish. They give it special names, but it's sort of a green color and a, uh, a red color and a blue. So and the, they combine differently. So my, what I remember, obviously I don't remember how they combine well, but isn't it true that if you have the primary colors, you can make any other color from those right. three? And that's why right. they're called the primary. They're the first and all the other colors can be made. The only those. color you can't make is black because black is an absence of color. There is no color. If you go into a dark room or you close your eyes, what do you see? Black. Right. As a matter of fact, if you took this nice blue tablet, blue package, and you went into a dark room, completely dark with no light, and you looked at it, it would look black. Everything would look black because black is an absence of color. Nice. Okay, so are we ready to spin this around? Yeah, so the predictions are rainbow. Rainbow. Well, it's a wow. rainbow now. It will be one color. And April finally says, spin it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so what color do you what see? Like. Wow, look at how that looks on the screen. I wonder yeah. how that looks for you guys at home. Yeah, it looks different on the screen. Can you guys sort of see it? Wow. On the screen for us, it looks kind of like a crazy rainbow. Spin yes. it for me. I'm going to tell you guys what I see when okay. it's not on the screen. Go ahead and spin it hard. Wow. It actually looks completely white. Completely Once white. Once you start spinning it, it goes It looks like 100 that. 100% white. So I don't know if you guys could see that. What did you see at home when we were spinning that? I'd like to know. Yeah, me too. Let's see. We saw it will be white, white, white. It's white! Okay, you saw white, yay! Sunset color, dark blue. Some people saw white, some people saw all of them. Some wow. people saw blue and red. Noah saw a rainbow, Lila saw a rainbow. So it looks like some people saw that white and some people saw kind of a rainbow color. Cool. Um, but that's great, that was neat. So why, so when they all spin together, why does it look white? Because our eyes cannot see it that fast, cannot see it spinning around. The computer is a little different because it's taking picture, a certain picture, picture. right picture, 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 and it's, it's you're able to see each and stop, stop, stop. But it's spinning out really fast, and our eyes can't see the different colors, so it sees it all as a blur as white. Does that mean that all the colors together make white? Like if you combine all the colors, that's what white light is? Yes, if you have a prism at home, 
and or um, if you see a rainbow in the sky, that's because the light from the sun or, uh, or the light from some source uh, hits the moisture or water droplets in the sky and it breaks them up just like a prism will. Oh. And you'll, if you're looking for a rainbow, the sun should be behind you and you'll see, if you see moisture or clouds up ahead, that's where you'll see, uh, that's where you'll see a rainbow. You won't see a rainbow looking at the sun. It has to be cool behind you. Okay, Great. now we're gonna do the next one. Let's do it. So, here I have high tech. I have a hair dryer. Why I would have a hair dryer, I'm not sure, but. Warm, warm air coming out. Good, and it. hold that. So this is a toilet paper tube and a ping pong ball. How do you want it? What do you suppose is going to happen? I'm going to put the ping pong ball there. And what do you suppose gonna is going to happen? It's going to shoot off, right? And then I'm going to, well, let's see. I'm going to, whoops. Oh. Uh, here, I'll do this. Go ahead and put it on top. Shoot up. I wouldn't call that shooting up, but it's floating. But I would have expected it to come off to one side of the other. You would. As a matter of fact, I could tilt it a little bit. Well, I'll put it so the camera can see. Can you see that I'm tilting this at an angle? That looks ridiculous. And it's still floating. There's no strings. So, why do you suppose that is? That is fascinating. Why do you suppose now, I, some of you might guess, well, the air is pushing it up and it's coming down, and that's correct. But why is it when I have it at an angle, the air's put, why doesn't it just go whoomp or lump or something like that? Why does it sort of stay in here? So we have our first guess. What's our first Javiera guess? Javiera says, warm air makes the ball rise. So I think it's a good start because we did see the ball rising, but I don't think that explains you tilted it and it wasn't falling down. It was staying kind of on that stream. Right. Now, if you don't have a hair dryer and a ping pong ball at home, you could try this with a fan and a balloon. And you turn the fan on, especially on high and or maybe low, whatever. It depends on the strength of your fan. And you put the balloon in there and then you tilt the fan a little and the balloon is going to stay huh. right here. So let's do this again. So another person says heat. Heat. Well, that would be, whoa, look at that. Is that awesome or what? Let me see how that works on camera. Oh, okay. you would be so. I'm going to make sure people can see it. This is really cool. That is crazy. It should fall into my hands, right? But it doesn't. All right, so we have some other thoughts. Heat? Well, except a fan. It'll work with a fan, and a fan doesn't give you heat. That's true, and I think hmm. that even has just a fan setting, right? No, it doesn't. Oh, well, that's never mind. All right, um, somebody says the ball is really warm. Nope, sorry, that one doesn't. But it's a good that. guess. Good guess. Hot air around it. Um, WJ says the air goes around the ball just like car a car in the wind. Yeah. We're starting to get there, I think. Okay, we're starting to get there. Let's see what else we have. Milo says the air is sucking it back into place. Boy, that's, that's, I like that. I Milo. like that explanation. So here's what happens. So when you have this on, air is going around the balloon on both sides. And it has to go, usually it'll just, it just will go in one direction, the, the air. But because this is in the way, it goes around the balloon and that makes it less pressure here. And it's that pressure which is holding it in the stream. Even though gravity is pulling it down a little bit, it's attracted to the low pressure here caused by the air having to move around faster. Yeah. And that's why cars are not well, some cars are not like a box because that will be a lot of air pressure. If you've been in the car with your mom or dad and you've had your hand out the window, you could feel the air pushing against your hand. 
But if you put your hand like that, you can feel the, it's, go, it's cutting, your hand is sort of cutting or moving through the wind without being pushed that much. Yeah, this is one of the coolest things. This is actually why airplanes fly, right? This is one of the reasons why airplanes fly. There's a couple of reasons in addition. But one of the reasons, we had a paper here, which we don't. If you took a piece of paper and you blew on it, let's see if I can do it here. I'll do it with this little plastic. And you blew on it. I'm going to blow on the top. What do you suppose is going to happen when I blow on top of this little plastic piece? Hmm. Hmm. So the air is going to be moving faster here, and it's not going to be moving very fast underneath. It's not going to be moving at all underneath, and or very, very fast. And so you're going to have faster air. And when you have faster air, you have less pushing. When you have slower air, you have more pushing, and it should come up. Let's see. I don't know. Remember, tried this before. We're going to do an experiment. There it goes. So I'm just blowing on top. So this is why one of the reasons why airplanes fly, because it had an airplane wing. That's my attempt at an airplane wing. I tried to set you up. An airplane Let's wing. Give me some space then. Looks like this. And what happens is the air is coming in from this direction, and. The air over here has to go all the way up here and here, and the air here can. So this air has to be faster and this air is slower. And just like in our little demonstration, when you have faster moving air and slower moving air, the slower moving air will push up. And that's why it does that. Now, also, one of the other things that a plane has, an airplane has, is it doesn't have, it doesn't only have that, it has, the wings are sort of not totally flat, they're up like that. So when the, when the uh, engines turn on, it's pushing some of the air down as well as to the side. So faster moving air. Let's do this again and let, let them see it now that we've kind of explained. Okay, okay, and we can science. use this and then. Fabulous. <laughs> All right, so okay. faster moving air has less pressure. If you can see how that might cause this to do what it does. Okay, now put the toilet paper tube on top. Okay. Yeah, whoa! whoa. <laughs> What's supposed to happen? Yes, did you not know that? Okay, so it's like if, you, if you're riding in a raft down a river and all of a sudden the river gets very narrow, what has to happen to that air? What happens happen to that water to get through? That's what they call the rapids. The rapids. Fast. The water moves rapidly. And so when it has to go through this little itty bitty tube, this tube, instead of all the air going this way, it has to go through there, and that makes it go faster. Whee! Okay. Oh. Now, oh, Sam, you're going to retrieve that because now we could try this. Now, you probably don't have a toilet paper tube this big at home. <laughs> if you do, it's time to see the doctor. <laughs> but we're going to we're going to try. I think this is going to bounce off the ceiling. What do you think, Sam? Yeah. I mean, okay. Let's see. All right. So let's. Anybody else want to give a prediction? Yeah, let's just do it. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> so why, I actually, I can't quite figure this out. Why is this creating so much more pressure? You probably couldn't see it on camera, but this one, when we used this, it shot up two feet. When we used that, it bounced hard off the ceiling and well, All because here, that rushing air is rushing this much and pushing this much. Here, when we have a big long tube, now the tube is pushing that ping pong ball all the way through here. It's going faster and faster and faster, and then it comes out the top. Interesting. I wonder if that's similar to 
Um, well, never mind. I think I'm going to take us into something. Okay, let's move on. Um, I think I've done this before, but it's one of my favorite things, so I'm going to do it again. Um, so this is just some a candle, and I'm going to wet this. I'm going to adjust the camera so it can be we can see a little bit better. I'll move it back a little. And but okay. You know what we can do? What can oh, we no, do? Sir? We need it wet, right? I was going to say we could tilt it just a little bit. Yeah. Put it on these. Give it a little bit of a little bit of height. Height. Um, and let's. I'm going to just tilt that camera down. We can readjust later. Okay. Whoops. Okay, good. That looks like it's pretty good. Okay. You have the lighter, Sam? Yeah, would you like me to light it? I would. I'd be happy to. That's that. delight. You're delightful, Sam. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Oh, is this a trick candle? No, but why is it doing that? Why is it? Did you see it sputter? Yeah. Why do you suppose it was doing that? I'll wait for you guys to answer. In the meantime, we'll try this. I'm just going to use this bottle because you're more likely to have a bottle like this at home. Um, so I'm going to add some more water here. And I'm going to add a little food coloring. Da, 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 da. Any uh, suggestions or ideas on why the candle was going making those funny sputtering kind of noises? Let's see what we got. So Lorna says it was because it fell in the water and it was wet. Very good. Lorna, you go to the top of the class for observation and a correct theory. Ding, ding. So now let's see what happens when I put this over the top. Whoops. I put that over the top and it went out. It went out. Let's try it again, Sam. Good observation. <laughs> we'll try this. <laughs> we'll try this again. So I saw, here's what I saw. I saw it went out. And as it went out, I saw some smoke build up. Whoa. And some then smoke I saw, build up. We're going to try that again. OK. Uh, I'm going to try it this way instead, though. I saw it created some suction, like it was holding it on. It created suction, bit. yes. That's, I can see that. We're going to try that. I'm just going to do this. We'll try this. OK. light yet. There's that sparkly. So that's from the water that got mixed up. That's from the water that has to, we have to get rid of the water. So now I'm going to try this and put this right over. Okay. So I think you guys can all see that it's still going and then it just went and went out. And we can see there's a little bit of smoke circling around. I don't think you can see that at home. And now Marty's pulling it up. And, whoa, what is going on here? I would say it's created the heat. And so the heat, we have hot air and cold air, so we have different pressures, but the hot air should be pushing it. You'd think. Yeah, so it should go down. So that theory doesn't make it, sense. That theory doesn't make, we take that theory and Possibly. throw it out. Okay, so uh, what else? What, what is our theories? theory? What's your theory as to why this happens? Why was I able to lift it? And it has water in it and a candle, and yet I'm still able to lift it up. So Lorna says, mm -hmm. I think she's talking about the flame going out, and this was a really good observation. She yes. The source of oxygen was gone because the bottle cut off the air supply. That's right, and that's why the flame went out. Good, so then we still have one more question, though. At why did the plate go up? Wow, and look, here's, here's a little clue. Can you see that the water got sucked up into there? There's actually can, a little bit I can of water see under there. I just noticed that. I hadn't noticed that before. OK. All right, so Lila says because of wetter air. That's a good theory. Wetter air, OK. okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. WJ says the water lowers the temperature. So when the vial goes over, it's only the warm air the fire produces. Mm. That's kind of the theory I had that we decided might probably doesn't actually work. Elijah says the heat makes a vacuum and it makes suction. 
The heat makes a vacuum. How does it do that? I don't know. I don't know if that, if that theory quite works out. But mm. it's, it's a good thought. Yeah. This is kind of how science goes. You see something, yeah, goes, would this exactly work? Right. Would this work? Would this work? Until you find something that works. Ahmad says the pressure inside the bottle will decrease. That must be true because this went up. So I think he's got a part of the truth The there. pressure inside the bottle decreased. Yes, that's why it sucked up some of the water. Okay. Now, so also, found something. Go al ahead. also what happened is the air got hot. And what do we know about the space hot air takes up? It takes more space. More space. So there were little bubbles that came out. Mm -hmm. And then once the little bubbles came out, I started to push down on here. And then um, what happened is the... The candle went out, the air cooled off, and it took up less space. All right, listen to these two answers. Go ahead, I'm Lana ready. Lana says the air shrank. The Question air mark. shrank, yes. And then Lila says because there is no air left. Well, there's some gas in there. there so why still... would the air shrink? I mean, that's a really good theory. If the air shrank, that would explain why it sucked water up. Into right, because don't forget the extra hot air came out. And once the hot air came out, I pushed my hand on it, pushed ah. down. So then the candle went out and then the air that was in here shrank and would only take up, let's say, this much space. Because it got colder again. Is right. That right. So it got bigger. Right. And the excess air went out. And then when it got colder, I didn't let the air or the liquid come back in. I pushed down. So it had to pull what it could, which was the liquid. Right. And that created the suction. Right. So now there's more uh, pressure on the outside trying to get in. And that's Beautiful. what is able to enable me to lift that up. That theory, that theory works for me. Well, I have so many other things to do here. Do we have time for one more, Sam? Well, we have 17 seconds. <laughs> we don't have time for one more, but I hope you'll join us next Friday because I have a whole bunch of other experiments to do where we can play scientists and why does this work and we could find out about how the physical universe works, which is what scientists do. So remember, curiosity is the cure for boredom. Stay curious about how the world works and the world around you. And Sam, let's promote these books. I feel like I'm on a commercial, but what we actually <laughs> want to say is, we know you have the weekend coming up. We know we're not gonna be able to fill your whole schedule and we're not trying to. What we wanna do is we wanna create that curiosity that you have. We wanna give you a chance to keep it going. So in the time you don't have a class like this, or if you just wanna be able to look for yourself, Go to heronbooks.com. You can get books that will give you learning guides you can walk through. Ooh, we grabbed a couple. Lovely color pictures. Make it easy to understand. These guys give you a few. These aren't necessarily the best suggestions for this group, but they might be great. This is a great thing for activities. Sun, Earth, five Moon, and, and Stars. This one's awesome. If you're curious about space, it gives you all kinds of things. There's hundreds of courses. You can get them really cheap at Heron because you're attending our webinars. So check that out as a way to keep you active because we would like you to keep curious. We'd like you to keep active. That's our whole hope and our whole mission in this time where it's a little bit hard to stay curious and keep looking for things you don't know. That's what I want to do when I went to college because my dad always said uh, that I'm just taking up space. <laughs> <laughs> little space jokes. I think that is a perfect close <laughs> to our webinar. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. That was fun.